Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation. x to the power 11 plus x divided by x to the 7th plus x to the 5th is equal to 205 divided by 16. We're supposed to solve for real x values. All right, at this point, if you want, pause the video and give this problem a try. Or you can just continue to watch. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do here is there's obviously you know, different ways to approach it. If you cross multiply and put it together, you're going to be coming up with a really uh, hard equation to solve. Um, it's going to be like 11th degree uh, and it's just going to complicate things. So I'm going to manipulate this a little bit. So what I'm going to do first is I'll start with the numerator here. So I'll take out an x, write it as x times x to the 10th power plus 1. At the bottom, x to the 5th is a common factor. So I'll take that out. And I'll end up with x squared plus 1. And this whole thing is equal to 205 over 16. Okay. Now, at this point, you may just be tempted to cancel out the x's. And x does not equal 0. We know that it's um, possible. We can do it. But it's not really going to help us a lot. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to separate this into two expressions like this. Okay. And like that. And then what I'm going to do is normally when we have a division problem, we go ahead and flip and multiply, right? So I'm going to do the opposite here. Or I can also look at it this way. Uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this expression here. What is the reciprocal of this expression? It is going to be x squared plus 1 divided by x. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that expression. And it's going to give us x to the power 10 plus 1 over x to the fifth is equal to 205 divided by 16 multiplied by x squared plus 1 over x. Okay, so what is so good about doing all of this? And obviously, in all these cases, x does not equal 0. Uh, and we're able to do that. x squared plus 1 does not equal 0 because x needs to be a real number, so on and so forth. So we should be good. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to separate these. So I can write this as x to the fifth plus 1 over x to the fifth. And then that equals 205 divided by 16 multiplied by x plus 1 over x. I'm also going to separate these two things. Okay? Awesome. Now, with this, it's going to be easier to manipulate, obviously, right? We just had to do a little bit of manipulation here. But then solution from this point on should not be too hard. So... This is what I'm going to consider. I do need x to the fifth plus 1 over x to the fifth in terms of x plus 1 over x. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this x plus 1 over x and raise it to the fifth power using the binomial theorem. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Remember in Pascal's triangle row of number 5, our coefficients are 1, 5. Uh, we have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, right? And that's going to be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, correct? Okay. So those are, that's my fourth row. This is my fifth row. Okay. So if I use those coefficients to expand this, I should be getting x to the fifth plus 5x to the fourth multiplied by 1 over x plus 10x cubed times 1 over x squared plus 10x squared times 1 over x cubed plus 5x times 1 over x to the 4th, plus x to the 5th, I was going to say, but it's supposed to be 1 over x to the 5th power. Okay? Awesome. So that's my expression. Let's simplify this a little bit. Now, we don't know what x plus 1 over x is equal to, so let's go use a variable for that one. How about we use u for that? Okay? Then I have u to the 5th power is equal to, from here I'm getting x to the 5th, plus 1 over x to the fifth, first and last terms. Then this term and this term is going to give me what? 5x cubed plus 5 over x cubed. So I'll put those together. And then these two terms are going to give me plus 10x plus 10 over x. Awesome. Now, I can simplify this a little bit more and x to the fifth plus 1 over x to the fifth. I'm going to keep that. 
because my eventual goal is to be able to write this in terms of u, and also I have to do it for the x cube. So this is what I'm going to do next. I'll call, well, this was already called u, right? So I'm going to cube that. Let me cube this. And when I cube this, I can cube it in different ways. As you know, there are two different ways to do it. But let's just do the binomial theorem way. The straightforward method, x cubed plus 3 times x squared times 1 over x plus 3x times 1 over x squared plus 1 over x cubed. And as you know, this is going to equal u cubed because this is u and I cubed uh, both sides of that. Okay? So from here, I get u cubed is equal to... I get x cubed plus 1 over x cubed plus I'm getting 3x plus 3 over x from here. So we're going to go ahead and work on these two expressions and simplify as much as we can and then we'll put it all together and that should do the trick. Okay, so here I can actually go ahead and write it like this. u cubed is equal to x cubed plus 1 over x cubed plus 3u because as you know, if you take out the 3, you're going to get u inside the parentheses. So from here, x cubed plus 1 over x cubed can be written in terms of u, right? And that's going to be u cubed minus 3u. Okay, so that's one thing I'd like to use. Another thing I'd like to use is going to come from here. So let me go ahead and isolate x to the fifth plus 1 over x to the fifth here. But let's go ahead and do the following first. u to the fifth is equal to x to the fifth plus 1 over x to the fifth plus 5 times x cubed plus 1 over x cubed, which I'm going to replace with later, and then plus 10 times x plus 1 over x. Okay, awesome. Now, I do know that this has an expression in terms of u, and this is u. So everything looks good. Let's go ahead and proceed u to the fifth power is equal to x to the fifth plus 1 over x to the fifth plus 5 times the quantity u cubed minus 3u, which replaces x cubed plus 1 over x cubed, plus 10u. So if you go ahead and put everything on the same side, but here you're going to be getting basically 5u cubed minus 15u plus 10u, which can be written as 5u cubed minus 5u, okay? So you can just go ahead and isolate x to the fifth plus 1 over x to the fifth that way. So x to the fifth plus 1 over x to the fifth is equal to u to the fifth, right, minus this, which is going to be minus 5u cubed plus 5u. So this is another expression I'd like to use in my equation. Okay, so I was able to get both of these. Now I got to go back here, right? X to the fifth stuff, and then replace everything with what I have. But here, I don't need to do, use this anymore because I'm done with the cube. So all I need is use this one, okay? So my original expression was X to the fifth. Well, not completely original, but you know, after the manipulation, I had this equation as you know. So now we can go ahead and replace x to the fifth plus one over x to the fifth with this expression u to the fifth stuff. So it's going to look like u to the fifth minus 5u cubed plus 5u is equal to 205 over 16 times x plus one over x. Okay, well, I should probably replace that too, right? Well, since it's equal to u, so this is u, right? Let's change colors here. Mm, this one maybe. Okay, so since this is u, this is going to be u as well. Okay, awesome. Now, I will go ahead and multiply both sides by 16. That's going to give me 16u cubed minus 80. Minus 80. Sorry, this should be u to the fifth power, not u cubed. This is going to be u to the fifth power minus 80u cubed plus 80u is equal to 205u. Okay, so at this point, what we're going to do is we're, we're just going to go ahead and put everything on the same side and simplify this as much as we can. I'm getting a fifth degree equation here, but the good news is that the we can just take out the u, right? 
we're going to be able to take out the U. So that's going to help us a lot. How is that going to help us? Well, uh, we know that U does not equal zero. Well, how do you know that? Well, we're going to check it out. But the, basically, the idea here is uh, we can solve this equation. It's actually solvable. Okay. But what is the idea, right? That's what we got to figure out. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this expression. So let me go ahead and subtract this. Okay. So I'm going to subtract 205u from both sides, and that should give me negative, right? 125u, and the whole thing is going to equal zero. Okay? All right. So what am I supposed to do at this point, right? What are, what are we going to do at this point? Well, we can just go ahead and take out the u. That's going to give me 16u to the fourth minus 80, u squared minus 125, and the whole thing is equal to zero. So what do we know about this equation? Why did I say it's solvable, right? Well, first of all, you can consider two cases here, one of which is u equals zero, right? That's one of the cases. The second case is 16u to the fourth minus 80 u squared minus 125 equals zero. Okay, now can u equal zero? Let's check. u is equal to x plus one over x. If x plus one over x is equal to zero, and it shouldn't be because if you go back here, if you go back here, that's kind of problematic, right? Don't you think? Well, if x plus one over x is zero, then we might run into some problems here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that closely. Okay, this means that x squared plus 1 is equal to 0, which means x is not real. So in, in case x is real, this is not going to happen. Okay, and we're looking for real solutions. So what we need to do then is just solve this equation. But that's a cortic, right? Well, that's a cortic, but it's a special type of cortic. So what we're going to do is we can solve it because you can use substitution here. You can say, hey, let u squared equal y. So you'll get 16y squared minus 80y minus 125 is equal to 0. Okay? Awesome. Now, we're going to need to solve this equation, obviously, but this is a quadratic. Come on. We can use the formula or we can just try to factor it, right? Well, is this equation factorable? I don't know. We're going to give it a try maybe or we can directly just use the quadratic formula, right? So there must be a way to solve it. At least it's a quadratic, so it shouldn't be super bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this equation in the quadratic formula. So y is going to equal negative b, which is 80, plus minus the square root of b squared. So it's going to be 80 squared. Don't worry, we're going to do some factoring here. Minus 4 times 16 times 125, but that's a negative, so it's going to make this positive and all over 2a, which is 32. Awesome. So let's go ahead and simplify this expression as much as we can. Obviously, I can take out an 80 squared from here, but let's see what we can, uh, we can get from here. So I do have 80, okay, 80 squared contains 16 squared, so that should be a good one. And if I take out 16 squared, well, okay, here's what I need to do. No, can I get a, an 80 squared from here. I'm definitely getting an 80, 5 times 25, that's going to give me a 60. So let me go ahead and factor this a little bit. Okay, fine. 4 times 16 times 125 can be written as 16 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 4. Okay, cool. So this is going to be 80, right? And this is going to be 100. So Unfortunately, I'm not really getting an 80 from here, but what I can do is 80 squared contains 16 squared. At least I can get out a 16 squared from here, can I? Let's see. Um, nope, I don't have that either. So all I have is basically uh, from here, let's see what factors we have. We have a 16 uh, times 4 times 25 times 5, okay. So the only perfect squares that I get from the second part is these. And from 80 squared, I can get 16 times 5 uh, squared, which means that they only have 16 times 5 in common. So the only thing I can take out is an 80, basically, right? So that's a common factor. So if I go ahead and do this, let me go ahead and do this. 80 plus minus, okay. 
I'm going to take out a 16 here and I can do a 16 from the 80 squared and I can do a 5 squared from it. So I can do basically 16 times 25. Awesome. So if I take out the 16 times 25, now I had 16 times 5 times 16 times 5. So I have now I have a 16 left, right? Plus, I took out the 16, I took out the 25, so I have 4 times 5 left, and that should be a 20. Beautiful. Okay. So now I have 16 plus 20 left, which is equal to 36, which is another perfect square, by the way. Beautiful. Okay. This is all perfect squares then. So it's going to look like this then. When I take it out, uh, that's going to look like 4 times 5, and this is going to look like 6. Basically, what I have inside was 120 squared which was uh, the you know perfect square divided by 32. So this is going to split up like 80 plus 120 over 32 or 80 minus 120 over 32. Okay, let's take a look at each one and remember what we called u, u squared equals y. So y is equal to u squared. You got to remember that these are equal to a perfect square. But unfortunately, this is a negative quantity. So I'm not going to be able to accept that, right? That, that is not going to work. So we have to get rid of that and proceed with the other one. So u squared is going to give me 200 divided by 32, which I can definitely simplify. I can divide these by 8, right? If I divide by 8, I will be getting 25 over 4. Beautiful. That's another perfect square in fraction form. From here, u is going to be either 5 halves or negative 5 halves. Beautiful. Okay. But again, we used u for substitution, so we still have to go and back substitute, but that shouldn't be too hard. What is u? u is x plus 1 over x, so let's go ahead and substitute that. x plus 1 over x is equal to 5 halves. So to keep a long story short, I know it's been a long time since we started doing this video, I'm going to go ahead and give you the solutions. And this shouldn't be too hard, you know, it's fairly easy. x can be 2 here or one half. And you're going to see that when you plug it in. So those are my valid solutions. Or if x plus 1 over x is the opposite and everything will be negated here, x could be negative 2 or negative 1 half. So these are going to be my solutions and they should all be good. Okay. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.